how do how do I just act normal in front of the camera? How do I um, guess get past the point where I don't look boring? Um, so I, I think you have to just be yourself because it's I think so hard. It's it, really hard. Welcome back, everyone. Today we have Chris Kwan, full time dad, husband, and real estate agent who's been in the business since 2012. He's a journeyman who's had the opportunity to work at six different real estate brokerages and is currently using video as his primary medium to share his journey. I think everybody deals with a certain level of fear. And um, it was interesting, like uh, my wife recently got me one of those Osmo pockets. Yeah. Yeah, they're tiny. Is it in your pocket? It's not in my pocket, <laughs> okay. but it's in my backpack. Yeah, yeah. And uh, these things are so tiny. And I, one thing I really love about this is that it's not, it's not obtrusive, you know? Like you could, you could literally have this out and people think it's a phone. Or your, I, I just held it with my wallet and I was shooting and nobody really, nobody really like, you know, said anything. Right. And I took it to the mall this past weekend and I had like several guys come up to me and go, Hey, what is that? Like, what, what, do, where do I get that? And what do you like about it? And so it was interesting, but, um, it's hard for me to obviously carry around bigger pieces of camera, my mirrorless camera, my gimbal. Um, but for me, that that's just an excuse, right? To not like, oh, I don't want to shoot somebody else, so I'm not going to shoot them. I just need to get over that fear of doing that. Or for me, it was just asking for permission to say, hey, can I shoot you? And then I'd be completely fine with it. So I think on a certain degree, a certain level, everybody's dealing with some type of issue um, on a reason why not to get started. But I will tell you, like, like my business has taken off um, crazy um, since doing video. You know, when I did started doing video like three years ago, um, it might completely change the way I do my business now. And I remember I was more of a traditional agent when I chase people all the time. Don't get me wrong. I still have to prospect and call people and do all that stuff. But uh, I was chasing people all the time for business where I, I think in the last three years now, people are starting to come to me and, you know, Hey, I noticed that you're the local expert or, oh, Hey, I saw that you sold this house through, you know, social media, video, whatever. And uh, that alone has really been, um, pretty nice. You know, I, I, it's one thing to chase people, but it's nice to, for people to seek you out. Um, and then obviously, you know, go through the interview and to make sure that, 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 um, you know, relationship will work out. But yeah, I would say for me, video has, has really done magic, um, in terms of business and I, I, whether it's video, whether it's the company I'm with, whether it's the coaches that I'm training with, whether it's the people that I'm around, I think, that all plays an important part to the big formula of make of being successful. And so as long as I'm, I constantly improve every single one of those, I feel like I am in, in good, good direction. Well, you talked about a lot of different things there. I think one key thing that you talked about is to get over the fear. Yes, there are some things that you just can hopefully try and get over. Like, Hey, this is the way I look. Hey, that's what you look like no matter what. Um, but what you talked about in one point was uh, incorporating your kids. And, you know, that was something that you enjoy doing. So sure. yeah. it was definitely something that, you know, you weren't necessarily just shooting a video at this point. You're creating memories, you're creating moments, right. and you're kind of tying that together. And I think that for somebody that's having fear creating videos, um, it's probably because they're creating videos to look like somebody else's videos and they're not really interested in that. Yeah. Do you I, think about that? I spoke to an agent recently um, in Nashville and she was explaining to me or she was trying to talk to me about, Hey, how do I get started in video? And it's not that she didn't get started in video. She just, she just would look at the stuff that she was recording and go, this is boring. Like in her own mind. Right. And so she didn't know how to make like her, her excuse was um, she didn't know how to make it interesting. So she wanted to know, how do, how do I just act normal in front of the camera? How do I um, guess, get past the point where I don't look boring? Um, so I, I think you have to just be yourself because it's I think so hard. It's, it's really hard. Well, and that's why if you can incorporate something that you like outside of, let's say we're making real estate videos, if you can incorporate some other aspect, for instance, I just had another agent uh, send this video where essentially she's being where's Waldo in her videos, mm -hmm. right? Cool. And what's what's cool about it is people are watching the videos to find her, not necessarily realizing that they're actually looking basically through this entire house right. every single time. And for her, you know, it's just kind of like a different twist on it where she enjoys it. 
people are talking to her about it. Hey, we actually saw you. Were you in that frame also? Because we kind of seen something or, hey, you know, the cabinet was open. We assume that you might have been in there or something just a little bit different where she's no longer just creating video. She's now, you know, she's creating engagement with her community. She's creating contests around it. She's doing all these other things where people want to see that. And, sure. and, and I think that if you're just creating video just to create it, just to film the bedroom and just talk about the three bedrooms and the two baths, then yeah, it can be mundane and boring. And you feel like yourself is not coming through the camera because you're probably not doing some of the things that Absolutely. you wouldn't do. Absolutely. I mean, you look at it like this. I think um, for a person who's been doing video for a while, not, not to say that I'm a pro, but I'm very comfortable with video. Um, and I feel like I've I've uh, progressed over the last several years and I've kind of found my own style and what I like to do, what I don't like to do. And so in retrospect, when I look back and I see people that are at square one, people are concerned about things that just really don't matter, right? They're worried about that one video about how they look and what are people going to think about it when really they should be thinking about how do I get this one video out and make a hundred videos just like that. And the progression of getting through one, two, three, four, when you get to five, six, 10, 20, 30, you're going to be in such a different place mentally, uh, physically. You're just going to, you're going to feel different about video and you're going to be in, comfortable in front of the camera. So I feel like people are just so like they're focused on such the small, the smallest things that really they're just, they're not thinking about like, Hey, what, what is this video going to look like? You know, hundred videos from now. So, uh, but everybody has problems. I had an agent this morning, actually, we were talking about her, uh, filming listing videos and portraying that on social and trying to build engagement. And it was hard for her to talk about this entire house because, you know, there's this many bedrooms and this many bathrooms and all these different things. It's boring. Sure. Right. So I said, well, what, what's your favorite aspect of the house? Well, instantly she tells me her favorite aspect. So I said, well, why don't you just talk about your favorite aspect of the house and set your audience up for success knowing that, Hey, rather than just posting a lot of videos about one, two, three main street. And I just talked about the entire house from now on, I'm just going to talk about the favorite details. And I would love for you to tell me what you think about it as well. Sure. And that was just something where rather than doing all of these different things, thinking of how it has to be perfect, have, I have to tell the story of every single bedroom, every bathroom, every, this, let me just tell one, one aspect of it. Yeah. I think, I mean, for, I think it's just a mind unlock for a lot of people, you know, just, one or two things. I mean, there's so many things you could do with that. If you've got like a 5,000 square foot house, you're, that's like a, that could be a 20 minute video, right? If you're going through every portion of it, but really you want to size it down. Okay. Minute, two minutes, you know, Facebook is pushing longer content. Okay. Three minutes long. How can I make this interesting? Do I incorporate things about the house? Can I incorporate things about the community? Can I go do an interview? I've seen that, um, quite a bit. That's actually pretty good. Um, anything that's spontaneous, uh, there's so many things you could do. I mean, I think, uh, I think they need to go through that though. I think they need to go through that boring video and go, okay, what could I have done better? How could I cut this up and make it more interesting? Um, and could they, could she take like a 20 minute video and cut it up to three minutes, you know, in different, you know, six or seven different videos probably. Um, but there's so many things you could do. Uh, it's, it's, it's as easy as it sounds. You just got to do it. And I think that's the hard part though, because, so hard. because, so hard. That's usually the answer when somebody says, well, what's your advice that you would give to somebody who's scared of doing video? Yeah. And the advice is just, just do, do the video, yeah. just turn the video on. Yeah. Okay. Well, that doesn't really help. So that's why I think, you know, doing something unique, doing something you like, um, and not even just realizing that the camera's there, doing something you would have done anyways, um, and allowing to attract the type of clients that also like those types of things, attract yeah. the clients that are going to talk about kids that are going to talk about surfing, whatever it is that you're incorporating into your video, I think is a somewhat of a way to kind of, you know, break that barrier or at least get you to step forward. But like you said, it's not going to be perfect from day one. And I think that's actually the issue that a lot of people have that haven't jumped into video now Perfection. is because they've seen so many great videos. So uh, high level production type videos and they only have their iPhone, which is a great camera, but they only have their phone right. and they think, well, mine is not going to look like that. Right. And, and, and I think that, you know, if to get over the fear 
um, rather than just doing it, I think they have to, uh, you know, maybe set benchmarks. Like you said, Hey, by video 100, I would like it to look like this or by video 10, um, let's see where I get. And then from 10 to 20, let's make some tweaks. And then right. they'll definitely see a, a huge change. Just even in this podcast alone, if you were to go back to episode one, you would think it was a joke, but yeah. I, 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 I turned on the camera and I started talking and then I just, okay, I like this. I don't like that. My wife tells me, okay, you're talking with the, your mouth to the side. Don't do that anymore. Oh, I, <laughs> oh, I didn't even realize that. Uh-huh. And then, um, you just get more comfortable, more comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the piece of advice that you would give to an agent that's that hasn't started in video because they're scared is? Well, you got to identify the problem, right? Like, just like anything, like, why are you scared of video? Um, what can you do t- in order to uh, get over that fear? You know, if you can line up everything on the table, like, these are the main reasons why I'm not doing video, and then just kind of tackle each one as you go along then I think it makes it a lot easier. Um, you know, if it's a, whether it's a fear of like, Hey, how do I look in front of the camera? Well, then go get dolled up or do the opposite, complete opposite, look like crap, you know, go out there and make 10 terrible videos. And who says you have to publish them, right? Make 10 videos in 10 days and then go back and then go, wow, I really like this. I really don't like this. And then make your first video. I mean, you got to start somewhere baby steps. So I think you got to really identify the problem and then you need to get over that problem, maybe through some practice or whatever. And, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of content that I've never put anywhere. Just go back and go, Oh, I like this. I don't like this. I wonder if how, how I can change that. Go do some research and whether it's quality or sound or whatever. Um, maybe I'm not smiling. Maybe I am talking on the left side of my mouth and I never noticed it before. Right. Maybe get some critique from other people, but whatever it is, you just got to get started. And, you know, do you have to get started because everybody's telling you to get started? No, but I think the coming from a person who, who has done video and seen the benefits of it, the benefits of video was that for me, at least was that I I didn't have to go out there and chase people. You know, I, I met people halfway like, Hey, this is who I am. This is my brand. This is the kind of person that I, uh, that I, that I would be if I worked with you, this is the product that I put out and essentially they're meeting me halfway and contacting me. You know, I'm just putting myself out there. And so it just made my, my life as a real estate agent so much easier, but that could be with anything, whether it's, you know, whether it's Coca-Cola or like your local restaurant or something. I mean, you got to put yourself out there. Nobody's just going to know you based off of word of mouth and you're losing so much potential if you just base it off of that. Right. So, you know, do you need to do video? No, but I think, the way the market and the way society is going, I think video is one of those things where, come on, I mean, you're going to be left up in the dust. Well, it's the closest thing that you can do except sitting across the the table from somebody. And if, you know, if, if you yourself knows that you're, you do much better at an appointment, your goal is an appointment. At at least I hope your goal is an appointment. And, And if you know that, Hey, if I can get in front of them, I increase the odds of actually, uh, doing a transaction, then uh, you should realize that video is the closest thing that you can get to that to get them to see how you look, how you mm-hmm. act, how you feel, what you like, what you don't like. Because not only are you getting clients, but you're getting clients who already uh, expect how you look, right. how you act, what you do. So then that way you actually uh, you get rid of a lot of tension and you re- get rid of a lot of things about, For I didn't sure. know you you did this. For I didn't sure. know you yeah. like that. It's like, No, Jonathan goes to Disneyland. He has a son. They go to the park. He does these different things. He does all these, like, that's who he is. Okay, well, great. Uh, For somebody else that's sitting across the table that they signed the listing but didn't know exactly who that person was, well, yeah, if you go out there and you post a video now of yourself drunk at the bar and they didn't know that was, you know, how you act, well, yeah, they might not like it. So I think you're you're not only attracting clients, you're attracting uh, the clients that, do the same things, like the same things, or at least know uh, a lot more about you. Totally. I mean, you as you can, as much information as you can give them, <clears throat> I think it's good. Because then, I mean, they know whether they like you, probably going to work with you. They don't like you, you'll probably never know anyway, right? And you probably never want to work with somebody who doesn't like you anyway, right? So I think it 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 really um, it really cuts out all the fat 
you know, in, other, in other words, I think it's definitely something that helps a lot of people. Um, and there's, I, I can't imagine like how many, there's been a bunch of times, especially in this year, people have called me and said, Hey, I saw you on YouTube, whether it's other agents. And I had this other agent showing uh, my house the other day. And I'm like, Hey, I've seen you on YouTube. I'm like, I don't know. I have no idea who you are, but you know, it just made that conversation a lot easier. If I ever got into a transaction with them, which I think I may hear soon a little bit, but uh, you know, and it opened up a lot of doors for me with other agents as well. You know, but especially with technology now where agent to agent referrals are so much accessible, you know, like seven or seven to 10 years ago, it's like, oh, if you had a client that wanted to buy, I don't know, Montana, we didn't have any resources for that. Like who the heck do I know in Montana? See you later, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, and so now it's like with social media and, you know, these different Facebook groups and, you know, going to these real estate events, it's easiest for us to obviously make those connections. But then on the back end, there's, you know, people that are sending me referrals, other agents, they want to know that I'm a comp competent person, that I'm doing some business. They want to know, like, if they were going to send me a seller that I had the social media presence, I had I had the marketing ability, I had, you know, certain things about me. So it's not just consumer. I, I use consumers as maybe like a broad umbrella, but consumers could be other agents. They could be uh, people that want to buy or sell with you. Um, they could be companies that maybe want to partner up with you. Um, so, and I just think there's a lot of, it's online, it's your online resume. Hey everybody, this is Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of this podcast. I definitely appreciate it. As always, make sure to reach out to me via social media at Jonathan Hawkins official. Send me a comment, shoot me a DM. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe below and remember who you hire truly matters.